Greetings sailors and welcome to a look, a first look in fact, at the Poltava which as I'm recording has just been released. Now I want you to imagine the love child of a Duke of York and the Sinop. Well you don't really have to imagine very hard because that's basically this thing. It does have some good points to it, but I'm going to say right now, this is a hard one for me to recommend. There's a lot that's frustrating about this ship, and some of the stats it has are a little um, hard to explain, if I, let's put it that way. In fact, there's one in particular where it is a little bit of a head-scratcher. So it's a tier 7 premium Soviet battleship. One of the notable things is that although it has got the limited use damage control party, it does not have the same uh, dispersion curve that the Soviet mainline battleships do, and I think the Lenin does as well. So I think it's using the American dispersion curve, but it, it's basically the same at, at most ranges apart from very close range like uh, other battleships inside of what is it like three kilometers I can't remember the exact number uh, but uh, that means that being closer basically gives you no advantage whatsoever unlike the Sinop. The other thing to note about it is that it has 14 inch guns which at this tier can be a bit of a liability and certainly do feel so in this particular case, and this is why I brought up the Duke of York in particular. But one of the, the things about the guns which definitely makes them rather frustrating to use is not only does the dispersion make it a bit frustrating, you get lots of shots that go under or go over, and uh, was it I Chase that compared it to the Roma in that regard? It's not a bad comparison at all. Uh, but you've also got 1.7 Sigma in total, which is still one better than Sinop gets, but Sinop can get closer for better accuracy, which this ship doesn't have the advantage of being able to do. Duke of York and uh, KGV in comparison have 1.8, which is a much more standard figure. So the accuracy is rather frustrating, and the fact that you have these 14-inch guns ends up being a bit of a liability even though you do have a faster rate of fire than other Soviet battleships at 28 seconds. But that's not as fast, of course, as the KGV. The Duke of York actually has a slightly longer reload. That's like 29 and a half. So it's very slightly faster than the Duke of York, but definitely not as fast as the KGV. So what this means is that there are a lot of ships that you simply cannot overmatch whilst being able to be overmatched yourself in return. And so you have to rely a lot on your high explosive shells. And that's why I picked out this particular game is that I'm going to do almost as much with the AP as I do with the high explosive. And it's not even including fires because this game will end up being not monster damage, it, I mean it just it demonstrated everything I wanted to you know talk about with this ship but with better RNG I would have done better damage wise just from getting more fires basically so it was a little unlucky that I, did, that I didn't but it was still okay. Now I did say there are some good points, it is very well armoured, you have a 200mm uh, bow belt extended and I think that goes for the stern as well, although it doesn't go quite all the way to the stern, to the, the very back of the stern, unlike with the bow, but you still have the 25mm nose above that uh, belt extended and so you can be overmatched by 15 inch and above guns, of which there are certainly plenty at this tier. So being bow on is not the best idea, but if you show a bit of angle and if you get your angling correctly, and hell, if you've played Sinop, you should basically have an idea of the, the kind of angling you need for this ship, then um, you will tank quite a lot. You'll, you'll be able to bounce quite a lot. And uh, to go along with that, talking about angling, 
especially when you're in this kind of kiting away position, you'll notice the turret angles are actually fairly decent as well. So that, that's definitely a positive. In fact, this ship is almost like some of the kiting cruisers. It's almost at its best when you can be in this kiting away position because you can use all three turrets. Now this was far from my first game in this. I had almost exclusively used AP in probably the first three, four, five games before I cottoned on that really I should be using a lot of HE. Which is, is never my first instinct when playing a battleship, but with these 14 inch guns you kind of have to. I mean we've already seen early on, and again this is partly why I chose this replay, is that the AP can give good results against broadsiding ships. And yes, that's an island well done. <laughs> Not that it matters that much in this particular circumstance. But against angled targets with the dispersion, with the fact that it's 14 inch AP, yeah, you might as well just switch to HE. And that even goes for a lot of cruisers that you'll be tackling as well. So you, the, the pen isn't bad actually. The the velocity of the shells, the you know the actual ballistics of the shells, is fine. There's nothing really to complain about there. But it's just that that loss of overmatch capability, and just the fact that this then becomes a rather lackluster, frustrating to use uh, HE spam battleship. I mean, that right there largely kills any interest I personally have in it, because it's. Inferior definitely to the KGV, I would say it's inferior to the Duke of York. It's definitely inferior to the Synop with those 16 inch guns. Uh, so, although there's a lot of stuff about this ship that's, you know, fine, that's not bad, this is why I find it hard to recommend just on the basis of the nature of the guns and the nature of the dispersion. And I do wonder if at some point in the future we might get the Sigma being tightened up a bit so that it becomes a more useful ship. Because we've had that in the past. We've had, I mean, like the, the Ashitaka, for example, is a really prime example where it was the, uh, the shells that the guns were using made it a pretty naff ship as a tier 7 premium. And then once we got better shells to use, um, suddenly it actually became quite decent. It has a really hefty broadside at the tier. And for, for this to uh, be bumped up to the level of considering it to be a bit decent, the accuracy would have to improve. I, I don't really see there's much else you could do with it. Because the armor's good, the AA is decent. As I've said, the, the, the turret angles are rather nice. So... It, it's a bit of an odd one, honestly. I mean, I have to wonder what the point of this was. <laughs> it, it doesn't really feel like it's filling any kind of hole. It, it's not a particularly interesting ship to play. Um, I mean, I don't honestly, like having, having said all this, you know, this is all predicated on the idea of this being a premium ship. And um, I don't know if it might be available in, by some other means at some point. At which, in which case, you know, maybe it'd be worth getting via a coal or something. But, you know, it's being sold at the moment in the premium shop as a premium ship. So on that basis, yeah, it's not really worth buying. But, uh, yeah, to, to go back to what I was saying, I, I don't understand really why this was added. There's no particularly unusual or different gameplay that it represents, and it is inferior to other similar ships already in the game. I mean, especially if we ignore the Synop as a regular tech tree ship and, say, compare it to, you know, Scharnhorst and Duke of York. Both of those are easily better than this. And Duke of, uh, Duke of York alone, just on having the much higher penetration HE and, of course, the, uh, the Hydro as well. There's not really a lot of competition. I mean, it's not like Duke of York is the most exciting ship to play. But just on the basis of better HE and actually one more barrel, because it's ten barrels on Duke of York, isn't it? It's two quad turrets and the single... Yeah, and this is nine barrels. 
So, why, why would you buy this? I, I don't really know. It's not like we have no other Soviet premium battleships. We have the October Revolution at Tier 5, we have the Lenin at Tier 8, which is, I actually, you know, I, I think is decent in its own right. So I just, I keep coming back to the question of why is this ship here? What, what was the thought behind it? It's just, it just seems like such an unnecessary addition to the game. So anyway, I'm just, I'm just kiting away, firing HC. That was the entirety of, of my game here. I probably could have sped this up because it really wasn't an interesting game. But honestly, none of the other games I had in this ship really kind of showed off the uh, the strengths and weaknesses in quite the same way as this one. So even though it's really not an interesting game, it's a good showcase of its capabilities. And it's also a good showcase of why it's just not an interesting ship. I mean, it, despite the armour, you know, it, it, you would think maybe that means it'd be good at getting in closer to things, but... Uh, it, it isn't really, and it, it kind of comes down to that dispersion. You can be a very close range and have utterly frustrating shots that just don't do what you need them to do. And because it manoeuvres like a pig, it, it's it's got like a thousand meter turning radius and uh, uh, not a particularly quick rudder response. Uh, it, it doesn't do particularly well at close quarters. And it's not like the Sinop is super manoeuvrable either, but 16 inch guns and, of course, the closer you are, the better your accuracy effectively is, the, the, the more your um, damage output capability goes. And that alone just makes the, the Sinop a much more interesting ship and, well, you know, there's arguments to be made about the Sinop being a bit too strong at tier 7, but... Uh, We'll see if uh, anything should happen to that in, in the future in terms of uh, nerfs. But it's certainly a very strong tier 7. And it's, it's not like this is a weak tier 7 in comparison. It's just utterly boring and worse than the other ships that do exactly the same thing. So there's only a couple of minutes left on this one. Uh, we've gotten a, a bit of a points lead. They did take that cap. There was a, a massive push, as you could see, down to the uh, uh, the B cap by the enemy team. But because they're basically all there, I mean, we've now got ships up and around A cap, although they are being uh, harassed by the carrier a bit. But yeah, this this big blob of ships that they're not really pushing to take C. I mean, they are getting some kills. It's not like we're dramatically ahead on points, but they're not really effectively focusing their firepower. They're not particularly having taken one map objective. They're not particularly then trying to take other map objectives. And we've even got that Bismarck, that enemy top tier ship who's chased all the way down to the eye line after me and, and this allied Bismarck who managed to survive despite taking a heavy battery. And I've just been throwing HE down range for the most part. And I have had an okay number of fires, but we'll see, as I said earlier, the actual fire damage done was not that inspiring, so... I could have easily had maybe an extra 10 or 20,000 fire damage if I'd been lucky in this one. But compared to Duke of York, it's just, you know, it doesn't have the extra HE pen, it doesn't have the fire chance. Which is why it's worse. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there goes the enemy KGV. Um, this is a bit of a choice of targets here. I could fire at that Bismarck, that's in range. I haven't even mentioned the range. The range is okay. Certainly not to be complained about. It, it's, it's quite decent for its tier. I think it's even maybe slightly better than Duke of York, or is it slightly worse? One is 8.3 and this is like 8.15, or is it the other way around? I can't remember, they're pretty close to each other. But as you can see, yeah, the Asashios Torps are about to nail that Bismarck. who was just, you know, ridiculously out of position place anyway. 
And now they've been whittled down enough to the point that, yeah, we've got a really comfortable points lead, despite our monarch doing their best to give a really terrible angle. Give the uh, the enemy ships a nice broadside to shoot at. Uh, I think they came into this bit of the engagement with basically full health. Look at where they are now. So, yeah, not the best angling, but it doesn't really matter. We've won. And it's just uh, a matter of uh, ticking down the clock and be trying a final bit of AP, but... Yeah, unless it's a flat broadside, even a bit of angling is going to resist these 14-inch shells, and that's true for cruisers that you'll meet as well. Not all of them, you know, if you're top tier, if you're firing at Omaha's and Königsberg's, then okay. But when you're seeing, heck, even some of the tier 6 cruisers, tier 6 to, through to tier, tier 9 cruisers, yeah. The 14-inch AP just really doesn't feel like it does the business unless you have a full flat broadside. And even then, the accuracy can be frustrating. So, second place, joint second place, really, with the Kaga. Had the exact same score as I did. The Asashio came top there. It wasn't really an inspiring game, but it's not an inspiring ship, so that's quite fitting, really. And there we are, five fires for 14k damage. And as I said, almost as much HE damage as uh, AP. Although it did require, you know, more hits. But yeah, I just didn't have the opportunities to use the AP that often. Expert loader might actually be a fairly useful captain skill on this ship, aside from the usual battleship skills, just because you will be switching a lot. So, uh, yeah, what is there else to say that I haven't already said? I just don't really see the point. If you're a collector, then okay, I guess it's there. It's a tier 7, it's not too expensive, but it's not like this is based on some super historical battleship, so... Yeah, this just seems like a premium added for the RU market. Based on the fact it's a Soviet ship. It doesn't need to be in the game, it doesn't add anything, it just feels kind of pointless. That's the most damning thing I can say about it, really. So that's my take on the Poltava, freshly introduced to the game. If, if you found this replay useful, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.